Hey, welcome back to the Guillemot Kayaks Workshop. I'm Nick Schotta and I'm finishing up the build of the Micro Built Lego Sport Strip Built Sea Kayak. In this episode, I'm doing sanding. I'm finishing up the sanding from the last episode and continuing on and getting it all ready for finish. So here's the area I patched yesterday. Um, there's a little bit of fogginess or haze in spot right here which I would like to get rid of, um, but otherwise it, it got rid of the problem I was trying to fix. This one just seemed to cause another problem right there and I'm not sure why. Um, we'll take a look at that a little bit more. But I just have this bit to finish up fairing um, and we'll just get to that. So there's several aspects on the back deck here where I'm trying to maintain certain sort of visual things. Um, I want this transition from the sides to the back deck itself to maintain as sort of sharp and crisp a line as I can. Um, I have a feature line there and on the feature line I've got a little accent strip. So I'd like to keep a nice sharp edge right at that. So I'm being very careful as I'm standing here not to go uh, over that line. So as I come up to the edge, I can have the sander overlap that line, but I'm keeping it flat on the given surface I'm trying to sand. So I'll hold it flat to this surface and let it overlap that feature line, that accent strip, but I'm being very careful to hold the sander flush and flat against the surface I'm working on without letting it roll over. And similarly, I want to keep this transition here where the transition from the back deck to the uh, cockpit recess happens. I want to keep that pretty sharp. So again, I can let the sander go beyond that point, but I'm careful not to push down on it and start to round that edge over a little bit. So keeping the sander flush against the surface I'm working on as I do the work helps me maintain that sharp edge. So it's just pressure down on the tool as I'm sanding and working along carefully. As I get into the back deck here, I have a similar thing going on. The angle here from the top to the side is more pronounced. It's easier to not mess that up. But I also have a spot where the flat curve of the back deck transitions into a little bit of a V here. And I like that little detail. Um, I think it, it, it looks cool. So I want to, again, be careful that I don't run the sander across that edge. I want to hold the block flush against the surface I'm working on and it's a little tricky in that it twists a little bit as it approaches the end here. So I may switch over to a smaller sanding block instead of the big fairing sander because this is really sort of not the same as fairing in here. It's a little bit more sculpting. Um, so I, I need to be cognizant of that if I want to get the look I'm trying to get. Right in here I've got a slightly low spot. You can see the shiny spot still remaining here. This is a tricky area because it is so flat that uh, it's hard to you know, basically I've got to beat down these areas on either side sufficiently to get into those low spots and keep it all fair. You know, I could very quickly just take a random orbital sand right here, but essentially I'd just be making a little crater right in that spot. And that sort of defeats the purpose of all this fairing. We want to make it so it's nice and smooth. And this is sort of a showpiece part of the boat. The back 
front and back deck, you really see that book matching, you know, standing over the boat on the beach, you're looking down, this is what you see first. This part of the back deck and the front deck. And so just trying to make this sort of as uh, awesome as we possibly can. So what I'm gonna do is just be patient here, keep on sanding away. And again, I don't want to just scrub in this area. This may appear to be where the problem is. So the inclination is to just deal with this spot right here. But again, it's fairing. So that means we need to take out the area around it, lower that to the point where it's all level. And so it's just, it's just patience. And we've got plenty of fill coat here to sand away at. Um, to make that nice and smooth. And so I'm gonna be working this whole area, trying to bring that down. So I've got the fairing sanding done. Looks good, it came out nicely as far as that goes. Everything's at a uniform scratch pattern, so it's sort of a uniform dull gray. Um, that's where we want it at, at this point. Again, with the long board, we're, we were bridging over low spots and sanding down high spots to bring it all to the same level. Um, and so that was the major sanding task to get done at this point. And then from now on, we're pretty much getting rid of scratches in the body of the boat. But before I proceed on to that, I want to sort of do the fairing and leveling of these last spots where the longboard doesn't reach around the cockpit here, get that leveled out and cleaned up again with uh, 80 grit sandpaper should be enough to do that fairly efficiently and get that all ready to go. And then we'll start moving up in grits. So I'm going to vacuum the whole boat off, get rid of some of this dust, and so it doesn't get into the air and cause a problem. Um, so just using the vacuum to clean that all up. Instead of, you know, I could take like a compressed air and blow it off. That would get the dust off of it. It has to land someplace and it would end up landing on the boat probably. I could take a brush and sweep it off and most of that would end up on the floor and then I'd kick it up later. So vacuum is sort of the most efficient way to just get that stuff dealt with and in a controlled manner. So it goes into my cyclone there. Start by getting rid of the drips again. There's some blobs of epoxy that got in under the combing here. So I'm using a little a riffler to get in there and uh, reach some of that stuff. Knock the tops off. So like other sort of feature lines and so forth, I leave the radius here between the lip and the face of the riser until after I've got those two surfaces sanded to where I want them. It's very easy to sand through a radius like that or any sharp edge because, you know, if I'm sanding out here and putting a certain amount of weight onto the sanding block, that weight is all distributed across the whole face of the sanding block. Where if I'm touching just the radius corner here, whatever weight I'm putting on the sanding block is concentrated 
right on that edge. So you end up put, sanding a lot quicker on sharp edges than you do on flat surfaces. So I want to be careful that I don't sand through the glass there. This has got a layer of glass on it, which is serving to keep the lip attached to the boat when you lift the whole boat up by the cockpit. So I want to be very careful that I don't break too much glass there. I want to keep that reinforcement as strong as possible. So if I go ahead and work systematically on the flat spots, you know, they're curved this way, but they're vertical, flat vertically, um, I can get that to where I want it and then just quickly come back and round over those radiuses and without ending up sanding through the glass there. So anytime you have sort of a sharp edge like that, you want to be careful um, that you don't sand through things. So where I'm sanding around the perimeter of the recess here, I'm sanding the flat and I'm sanding the flat. I'm going to leave that shiny edge there until much later in the process. And that way I know I've got a good amount of glass there. Um, I might reach a point where the sanding this way and the sanding this way meet and then we'll end up with a really nice sharp edge there. Um, I probably don't want to leave so that hard corner there in the long run um, because that again it's delicate when you're using the boat. You put your paddle back here and lean on it, that's all going to get concentrated on a very sharp edge. A, it'll make a mark in your paddle, and B, it'll tend to dent that surface. So rounding everything off eventually is called for, but we want to be careful about it and really systematic about it and, and intentional about how that corner or radius is going to be treated. So it's not something that accidentally happens. It's something that we've thought about and planned and done the way we want it done. So for sanding under the combing lip and those hard to reach places around the combing, I've made these little sanding tools. Just a piece of wood, this is, looks like a piece of maple or something, epoxied or hot milk glued or whatever I had available to, this is a little um, stainless steel hook that came with something we got at Ikea. Um, but Basically, it's just a piece of metal in a useful shape for me. And I take a piece of sandpaper, self-adhesive sandpaper, stick this to it. Now I've got a little sanding block that helps me get in under the combing.
One of my favorite materials for making sanding blocks out of is uh, pink insulation. Works great. Nice soft block. Let's see. make something that is custom fit to your situation. Okay, with the long boarding done, we can break out the power tools. So I've got my Festool, smaller Festool that does a finer orbit, three millimeter orbit. So the goal at this process is to just get rid of the scratches from the fairing. I used 80 grit there. I'm gonna use 100 grit here. Um, this is a compromise between speed and fine finish. I could going from 80 grit I could go directly to 120 um, and that would leave a finer finish but um, would take longer to get rid of the 80 grit and since I'm, I'm figuring since the um, hand sanding tends to make sort of deeper grooves than the random orbital this will be a little bit faster than if I went with 120 and then from there I might go to 150 and then 220 we'll see how it looks um, and go one step at a time. But this will go quicker, or should go quicker, um, just with the power tools. Once again, I'm gonna be systematic, like I always have been, working from one end down to the other, going back and forth, up and down, and then move on. So again, the goal of this pass of sanding is to get rid of these lengthwise scratches from the 80 grit on the long board. So I'm looking closely at the surface, looking for those scratches, basically trying to make them disappear. It's not brain surgery, it's just patience. Now there's still a few very fine scratches in here, but uh, I can go a little bit farther, but you can see how they slowly disappear as I sand away at it. One thing to keep in mind here, sandpaper doesn't last forever. It can even be looking pretty good and just not doing the job that well anymore. And so I will be switching the sandpaper out quite frequently. I started out with a foam contour pad on here. It does conform to the surface of the boat better, but it also takes a bit of the energy out of the, the action. So uh, when I took that off, the, I, you know, it, it was quicker to get rid of the scratches. So I think I'm gonna go over with this pass without the contour pad on, and then add that as I get to the finer grits.
right, so that's sanded out to uh, 100 grit. Now I need to take and uh, sand out this area. I'll probably do that to 120 um, since it's going to be hand sanding also. And I think. Okay, now I'm going to go to 220. I've got the contour pad back on, and we'll see how that goes. See if this is aggressive enough to get rid of the 100 grit scratches. I don't know. Um, right now, it doesn't look like I've got many scratches in it, but this is a pretty good sander, and it's good, nice, and even. And so it's possible it's a lot more scratched up than I think, and the 220 will have a lot of work to get through it. So. We'll give it a try, see what happens if I need to jump back to 150 or 180 or something to get rid of these scratches, so be it. But if I can get away with being lazy, I'm all for it. Okay, so you have here some of the 80 grit scratches left. And we're seeing a little swirl in there. You get these little swirls. That would be the uh, 100 grit scratches. And, you know, I should have gone far enough to get rid of all of these 80 grit scratches. I'm not going to worry about it. I think they're fine enough and few enough that uh, the uh, clear coat will cover over them in the long run. The fewer scratches I have left in here, the better the clear coat will lay down. So I'm trying to decide if I throw in another intermediate grit, like 150, to just try and reduce the remaining scratches. And then when the 220 hit comes in, it'll have a better chance of uh, getting it down to nothing. So I think I'll throw in 150 and uh, go over the whole thing with 150 and come back and do it again with 220. Alright, that's 150 grit. Um, now I'll just go straight to 220 again. See how it goes. So that's enough for today. Um, it's looking good. There's still a few swirls in it, but you know, the finish will cover most of those up, I think, just fine. And I'll end up buffing out the finish anyways, I think. So it shouldn't be anything visible when it's all done. But I, and I think I'll also call that the end of an episode here. The next episode will be a little bit more sanding on this and then I think I'll get directly to the finish work. I actually, I have more sanding on this, not a lot around the combing and I might hit it with the fairing board with 220 just to finish it up, we'll see. Um, but I also have the seat and the backrest to uh, give some sanding on. And I have a partially complete paddle that I want to do the finish work on that as well. So that'll be the next episode. Um, and we'll see if we actually get to applying a finish in the next episode. Depends on how ambitious I am. So we are getting close to the end of this whole build. Um, just a few more episodes left. Not sure how many it's going to take to get to the end. But if you enjoyed this episode, give me a thumbs up. If you're interested in seeing this project through to the end, hit subscribe. If you want to see what I'm doing next, um, hit subscribe. But if you'd like to support me making more videos along these lines, um, head over to Patreon, chip in a little bit, every little bit helps. And it does make it more worth my while to set up the camera and document what I'm doing while I'm doing these builds. But I really appreciate your support one way or the other. So until the next episode, thanks for watching and happy paddling.